clear room. Good. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another Chen style class. Um, let me adjust my screen again. At least try and get it perfect before, but it doesn't tend to work. Good. So let's salute, please. Let's take right hand in fist, left hand straight, go back to thumb, feet together, hands together, and let's press forwards. Excellent. Relax down. As you can see, I'm in my summer clothes. Um, I've sacrificed the long sleeves of clarity uh, for being able to cope with the heat. So my apologies for that. Keep going with your circles, please. Um, hey, that should be better now. Yeah, just switch the microphone. Good. Okay, so we'll do a few wee, I say circles, it's more like squares. Feel into the four corners of the hips. And breathe. Oh, good. Say hello to your body. Good. Let's change direction, please. Notice how you feel today. Lovely, let's take the weight onto one side and we'll do a little rotation down the leg. Let's link the fingers together and rotate the wrists. Uh, I shared a video that I made there on Friday. We had an absolute beginner coming into what's normally uh, an advanced class change, please. And I just thought, okay, let's just do some basics. And we actually spent the whole class pretty much doing warm up exercises, qigong exercises, stretches, and we did some open door five. And I've shared it with the world um, as I think it, they're useful exercises. Shake out, please. So have a wee look. Um, maybe share it on the, the WhatsApp group. On the other side, please. But any movement is good and any Tai Chi exercises are all very good for the health. Let's change direction. So some days you won't feel like form. You just want to move your body and feel better. Uh, so hopefully that will be a resource for you that you can go back to that and just do plenty of limbering, mobilizing, circling. Let's do a little circle of the knees, please. Keeping the feet flat to the floor. And change. Good, and let's do one at a time. Good, and change. Good, bring the feet together, keeping the feet flat, circle together. And chain. Good, let's stretch the legs. Try to keep the feet together now as we sit back and down. And just you go as far as you can comfortably, up you come. Good, and we'll do that three times. Good. And up. Well done and open. And let's do our little rowing action. Breathe. And we'll turn with the waist. Same movement, drawing in twice to each side. 
See if you can go a little bit further the second time. Rather than carrying yourself around, just release into the twist. Good. And let's come back to center and we'll circle those arms. Good, and change. I must admit my instinct in this heat is just not to practice. <laughs> but if we go back to the origin of Tai Chi in China, they don't practice in the heat. They get up first thing in the morning before the break of dawn. So in summer, literally, it could be at four o'clock in the morning that they're up and they go down to the park and it's still cool. And even there's some moisture in the air. Change direction, please. And that's when they train. That's when they do their hours of Tai Chi, when it's still cool. So um, if you're struggling in the heat, yeah, you can consider doing evening practice if that's uh, if getting up at um, at a ridiculously early time does not appeal to you, but you want to do your practice, maybe consider doing it, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night. You can put in a, an hour or so then, um, and at least the heat of the day will have gone off a bit. And that's... What they do in China, it's either first thing in the morning or after sunset that they'll practice. So when the yang chi is rising, as in before the sun has risen, the sort of energy is building up for the day. Uh, and then after sunset, when the yin chi is getting stronger, and that's really practice is going to help you sleep. Good. Circling those shoulders, changing direction. One gentleman um, is a fantastic student, really committed, do, does a lot of standing practice. And every day does a standing practice. He contacted me recently and said, look, this heat is just <laughs> too much. <laughs> Saying I'm doing 45 minutes, but it's wrecking me. And I, I just responded, yeah, don't be standing for long periods of time when it's when it's very hot because it'll just drain you. Change direction, please. So again, you have to adjust the timing of your stand to when you're cooler. Or find, as I said, find a cave or a cathedral or somewhere nice and cool and uh, do your stand there. Good, let's come back to center. And lift and relax down. And again, breathe in and out last time. Lovely. Let's lengthen through the top of the head. Allow the chin to relax forwards. And let's just gently roll head to one side and then the other. Very good. Let's come back to center and float up, breathing in and relax down. Ah, oh, breathing up. Very good. So we tend to go a bit crazy with the weather here. I know because we don't get much sun. So when we do, folks think, oh, happy days. And people get it in their heads that the sun is healthy. And of course, it is healthy in moderation. But doing your Tai Chi in the midday sun is madness. And I know I actually ended up doing it yesterday myself because I had a client who wanted to do sword and there was only enough space outside. Luckily, it was cloudy uh, and it wasn't um, it wasn't overly hot. But even then, I found that we would sort of duck in to um, shelter when we weren't actually swinging the sword around. 
but it's not the best idea to practice outdoors in the midday at any time of the year really but especially in the summer it's just too hot and the sun in chinese is called taiyang taiyang that's the sun there that's an image of the sun it's an old chinese way of doing it the circle with a dot in the middle it means it's extreme yang and let's think about this we're doing taiji we're wanting to balance the elements so if you go out in the extreme yang you're going to knock yourself out of balance you could get sunstroke you could get burnt you just will will exhaust it's it's too hot so um yeah please don't be training you know don't go out into your garden in the midday sun and do your training because even though it might seem like a good idea oh sunshine let's do some nice movements no it's it's just too it's too much for the system all right so let's uh, have a little stretch and we'll get on to our form let's take a big step forwards and square those hips one hand to knee one hand to hip and gently encourage the hip forwards and breathe so we're getting a nice gentle stretch. You can always lengthen your stretch if you want more of a stretch. But we're not looking for agony. We're just looking for comfortable lengthening. Lift the back heel and sit down. And breathe and let's point the fingers down. Check your balance. Float up, lengthening up and lift your chest. Good, and let's open to the sides and walk your feet gently in. Good, on the other side. So we'll take a nice big step forwards. Ah, that's the side I just did. I've done that several times now. <laughs> big step forwards. <laughs> Good, squaring up one hand to hip, one hand to knee, and encourage forwards. And again, you can lengthen your stance. We don't want to be in agony. We just want to feel a good stretch. Good. Lift the back heel, sit down. Keep your front knee in line with your toes. Point to the floor and lengthen up. Lift out of your hips and arc back. Good. And open to the side and walk your feet in. Good. Well done. How are you feeling? Let's just do a little rotation of the hip and three steps to recover, get your balance. You don't have to lift, lift your leg high, but you can do. We just want to feel that mobilizing in the joint. Let's go inwards. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. And a little shake out. And just check how you feel. Check your arms, check your body, have a little stretch. You can see my, my arms go backwards. <laughs> so I have to be careful when I stretch. Just not to freak people out. It doesn't hurt me, but they go, ugh. <laughs> Good. All right, let's just uh, give ourselves a, a little moment if you want to have a drink, uh, blow your nose, anything at all, um, or keep stretching. And we'll go into form. Good. So we're going to continue on with our mirroring front view of the form. So I'm taking out the turns. Um, we're just we're oscillating between facing absolutely screen and facing quarter turn. Um, but we're leaving out the turns really at this stage, just so that you can see clarity for the arms. Uh, as, as best I can, I'm mirroring um, our normal movements so that you can copy exactly, literally like you're looking in the mirror. So that's a right punch. And that's the bit that I got lost in last week. So let's try it. Let's go from the beginning of the form. And I'm going to stay, if I can, quite close to you so that you can see clearly what the hands are doing. 
So we bring our feet together, we'll float up the top of the head, chin slightly down and back. Just give yourself a moment in Wuji, calming down. Good, let's release belly, hips and knees, filling right, emptying left, step open. And breathing in, breathing out. Scoop, up, release, lifting, Turn out and expand. Circling back, filling forwards, relaxing to center, expand and come through. Up, down. Here's up. Open, gather, hook and step, and body, shoulder, elbow, hands, fingertips, and arm palms relax to center. We're going to scoop. Circle, level with the waist, let the hands roll. Feet across, drawing in, screwing into position. Apparent close up. Single whip. Right toes twitch in. Relax to center. Now I know you can't see my feet. Maybe a little back. Okay. Ready and hook towards hand. Release and circle. And keep circling. You're going to lift your left toes, turn them out and step through. Let me see, just hold it there for a second. Yeah, okay. Okay, so yeah, you've done your circle. Okay, so we're turning out, we're going to, in fact, don't turn out, just stay facing the front. Expand, relax, expand and come through. Yeah. Up, down. Up and down. And we're going to pierce again, same as before. Circle and come around. And this time, gathering in the right foot, we're going to step back. And we're going to turn left, flip the left palm over. Do you see that? Come forward, turn left, flip the left palm over, turn right, flip the right hand over, and untwist. White crane position, relax to center. So we turn, chop, and turn, and chop and step. When we do our oblique step, we turn towards the right, a little bit more towards the right to release the shoulders, and oblique. So there's your diagonal turn pinch, filling your back, standing up open and relax to center. Now release right shoulder and hip back in order to come forwards, embrace knee, forwards and up, back and down, circling back, 
up and over, step left, change, step right, change, step left. Good, and we're gonna do the oblique step again. So we turn, turn a little bit more, and bend the front leg, make a beautiful long straight line in the body. Turn, pinch, sit down, fill your back open, and relax to center. Again, release right shoulder and hip back to allow the embrace knee forwards and up, back and down. We're going to take two steps and turn. Ready? So we come back up and over. Step one, step two, and on the third step, this is where I made it wrong. Just can you hold that for me a sec? Yeah, so left, right, left. Okay, so where are you? You have done Okay, so we're going to turn to your your left corner and uh, to step to the side. And we're going to prepare. So your right hand coming into fist. Yeah, and you're targeting with your left. Good, relax to center. And we're going to punch. Good. Now release the fist and open. And the back hand, your left hand is scooping towards your right and you're going to do a little turn and bring the right hand underneath and you're going to keep turning to your left to flip your right hand over so now both palms are facing out and we're going to untwist <laughs> give me a second relax <laughs> and breathe yeah good well, we're going to cover that bit again this is where i got stuck the last time and maybe you can see why because lots of turning but anyway we've done our punch this is in the railway same way as you left towards right right hand under keep turning and we're going to push the hands apart as you feed your weight right left toe turns in feeding the weight left releasing the right and come through why is that so difficult to mirror i don't know <laughs> but that's it let me think about this as well okay so you've done your punch Left scoops towards right, right hand opens, right hand comes under, keep turning, and we're feeding the weight back, turn in, feeding the weight across, release, and come through. Okay, so that's what you're doing. <laughs> you're doing the same thing each time, but I'm now going to try and mirror it. So let's do it from the punch. Okay, so. The hand that's at the body comes forwards, the fist opens, and your right hand comes underneath. You keep turning, the right palm turns. You're going to feed the weight back into your right foot, separating the arms, the toe turns in. Feed the weight into the left and release the right side to come through. There you go, we did it, yay! Up, <laughs> down, up. Down. Shall we do that bit again, seeing as it gave me such grief? <laughs> All right. So from our punch facing the diagonal, we punched right, right. So we release and we scoop towards it. The right hand scoops underneath, collapses the ball, so to speak. Keep turning. Palm, uh, your right palm turns to face out. Now we shift the weight back as we separate the arms and turn that left to win. Release and come through. Good, up, down, up, down. Let's do it again. I'm gonna come forwards because you know the leg work, you know all this. So it's not really, ironically, it's to clarify and it's, yeah, <laughs> it's not so clear for me, but here we go. Okay, so you're ready for your punch. You punch and you release. 
and you scoop, collapse it in and keep turning your left shoulder back as you turn your right palm to face out. So now both palms are facing out, feed the weight back as you expand, turning to the front and release to come through. Up, down, up and down. Good, well done, rest for a moment. Good, now that release creates this kind of circle of the leg, but it has to be natural. I don't want you to do what we would call a rond de jambe uh, in, in ballet, this kind of carrying your foot around. It's just the rotation and the release causes the, the foot to do this little involuntary circle. So I used to, when I first did this, I controlled everything. <laughs> I'm a real control freak. Can you tell? <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I was carrying my leg and I thought, well, this is good Tai Chi. I'm doing the circle. Look, I'm carrying my leg. No, it's not designed to be a carriage of the leg. It's just designed to naturally be an upshot of the rotation of the body and the leg will naturally do it. So let's try it together. We'll do it again mirrored and then I'll do it the same as you back face. And hopefully you'll get that feeling of release and that little circle, but it actually doesn't matter if it doesn't express itself very much physically. What we want is the feeling of that spiraling internally. So um, this is why Tai Chi is an internal martial art. It's not about what the body is exhibiting. Um, if we do it correctly internally, the outside of our body will exhibit the right thing which is very different from just trying to get our body in the right shape. It's very complex, really. <laughs> but at first, when we're learning it, just get yourself in the right position. That's enough. Um, and then as you go, you'll start to pick up, oh, actually, I felt that there's a spiral and you can relax into it. So preparation for punch. Fist opposite elbow, relax to center. And we're going to punch, turn center, and push the arms in opposite directions. Good, release. So left hand scooping towards right, right hand releases and comes back and turning, scooping the right hand under. Keep turning left shoulder back, turn your right palm out, feed the weight back as you expand the arms, left toes turning in, feeding the weight right and release and you'll get that little circle to go up down, up, down. Good. Let's do it without the commentary, just together. Ready? And Good. And now let's do it without the commentary back view. So we're all doing exactly the same thing. Good. Let me come closer yet <laughs> and we'll do the back view. You can see it close up. So there's moments there that actually the back view, you can see the hands clearer. It gives you a good opportunity. If you feel that you already know what you're doing, great. This gives you an opportunity to fine tune it and to really delve into it. If you don't know what you're doing, great. It gives us an opportunity to, to cover it. So ready, facing the corner, preparation and punch. And one, two, three, release the right side, up, down, up, down. 
Good, and rest. Good, okay. Folks, is that bit any clearer? Is that working for you? You can give me thumbs up, yes. Okay, happy days, I'm so glad. Because it was a real sticking point for me for some reason. Last week I had managed to get us onto more familiar terms for me, pointing to the normal corner. But then of course that didn't work because it was no longer mirroring. So I was trying to mirror and do it normally at the same time. So shall we move on from that move, keep going? Yeah, all right. Okay, so let's do it again and then keep going, okay? So we are facing the corner in preparation for punch. And punch. One, two, three, expand, turn in, and come through, up, down. Now we release. And notice I'm not going down, I'm just opening and filling my hands. Feel there's a place where your hands will feel really full of energy, really um, throbbing almost. And float up and in, right hand on the inside and relax down through your center, which draws the arms down. Now we're going to do a tiny little prep, turning to the left, sorry, turning to the right in order to feed to the left. And the hands go into a full on twist here. They're not just sat, it's full on twist. Both arms, full on twist. And your right hand is actually really quite close to your body. It's not floating away. It's, it's quite close. Let's do that again. So we've done from our Jing Gong Pummels the Mortar, or I call it Hammer Punch. For brevity, release, expand, fill the hands, float up and forwards. Right hand on the inside, relax down. So a little gather to your right in order to feed and twist those arms to your left. So they're full on twisted, both of them, thumb edge under. Looking to your right, step right, look to the left and untwist. So now the arms can release that little bit and we're going to feed into the right and let the right arm drop. Turning in the waist, again, you're turning on the diagonal and feed the weight into your left, drawing your left hand across the waist. Keep turning and you'll get to the point, your hands are in front of the center line, but we curl into fists. Now feed into your right as we uh, feed the weight back, the arms rotate. So you're pressing your fist into your waist. And what we want is to line up pretty much toes, knees, elbows, shoulders, and eye line on your left hand side. And with your right hand side, you'll see also there's harmony. The fist is pretty much above the foot. The elbow is pretty much above the knee. So it shouldn't be out here somewhere. It should be um, in line. And you're actually pressing into your waist. You should be able to see the back of your wrist as if you're looking at your watch face, but you don't look there, you look past your elbow. Good, and release. Ooh, and just relax down. Now this point is another point, this next move, the recovery move in preparation for punch that I also struggle to, uh, to mirror. So let's have a look at what we've just done back for you and I'll work out how to do it mirror as we go. Ready? So we've done our punch. We release and float up, cross and relax down. A little motion to the right in order to feed and twist the arms to the left. Look right and step, look left and twist and bending the right arm. I think of an aeroplane here. 
with the arms, turn the waist, feed the weight across, left arm across the waist, right arm coming across, make fists and press into your waist. Good, so you're looking past elbow, knees and toes. And we simply release and just a little turn to your right as you let your arm untwist and fold in and the left hand underneath, relax to center, to then square up, feed right, punch. Good, okay, and rest. So that's what I'm trying to work out. How do I do this in mirror? <laughs> but let's try it. Okay, so let's go again um, from the hammer punch and we'll go through uh, to, it's called side punch. I call it side punch, this punch. Yeah, so side punch is with the, literally the side of the fist and you're extending out. So you can imagine if that is my opponent, I am punching them like this. Yeah, so it's not twisted like this. Um, it's not trying to punch them this way. You're literally using this part of your fist. Okay, thank you, Chair. That was very useful. <laughs> okay, so let's have a go from our hammer punch. Ready, we release and fill. So the belly is full of energy, the hands are full of energy. We float up, across, no higher than eye height, eye line height, so you can see at all times. Right hand on the inside, relax center, which brings everything down. And we do a little turn to the right in order to feed and rotate the arms into the left. We look and we step and we look to the right, sorry, to the left and release. Ready? And bend the knee. Aeroplane turn, feet across, left hand across the body, keep turning and roll into fists, both hands feeding back into the right side and line up toes, knees, elbows, shoulders, eye line. Good. And we're going to release and just turn just a little bit to the right as we feed into the left, circle it down. And notice that the arms are overlapped. You're not here, you're here. So just a slight opening to your right, relax to center. And the weight you'll notice is more on your left. And now as you square up, you bring the weight into the right and punch the left hand to belly. Okay, let's try that again. So we've done our punch. We pierce and rotate. No, we don't. <laughs> I'm on autopilot. Excuse me. Let's go again. From here, this is the... This is the splits one. So we release the belly and open and we float up. Right hand on the inside, relax down. A little rotation to the right in order to rotate to the left. Look and step, release and aeroplane. Turn on that line. Feed the left hand across the waist. Keep turning, rolling into fists. Press into the waist, line up, toes, knees, elbows, shoulders. Release to the right. Let the fist roll down the weight into your left. Prepare and then shift the weight, untwist, hammer punch. Good. How did it go? <laughs> yeah, again, let's just do it together. Again, now I'll stop commentary and just see if you can follow with me. And I hope you are, I'm sure you are thinking as well, because you have to keep me right <laughs> in case I go off paste. So uh, 
So yeah, just relax into it, but stay present and let's see if we can do it nicely. Ready? So we'll do our punch. And Very good. And again, I'm going to come even closer so you can see the hands a bit clearer. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Ready. And. and rest well done take a moment relax i know we're going quite slowly through these and partly that's because i need the time to to process it but i think if we're going to do this mirroring for clarity we might as well take our time and do it clearly <laughs> rather than racing through so um, shall we move on to the next little bit, folks? Yeah? OK. So we have done our little hammer side punch. Now we're going to release and open the fist, turning to your right. Release, lifting your left toes and turn out. Now this is a turn, again, to face the side. Just relax for me. I know you know the form, but just to put it into context of doing it properly with all the turns, you have just done your punch. Now we're gathering to your left, turning. Sorry, I'm still mirroring words in the head. <laughs> punch, you're scooping, turning to the right, and then turning to the left and doing a full step through. So this is a real big turn. And of course, with the whole mirroring and moving and leaving out turns, that makes that somewhat impossible to translate. So let's just practice that move as we do in the form all together. And then I'll bring it back to mirroring when we're not turning. And yeah. OK, so. We have our punch. We're gathering to the right. We're doing a little turn to the right to release and lifting the left toes, turning on the heel and just keep your arms with your body. Don't let them be left behind. Don't let them go in front. Just go with. Feed the weight forwards and step and keep turning. Let the arms rotate uh, to your left. Feed the weight forwards, screw into the front leg and fill your waist as you fill your hands. Good, and rest. Now we were actually doing this live in class, you know, in a face-to-face -face class the other day. And I had one student who was, if you watch, he was kind of dragging his arms behind. And then when he tried to fix it, 
he brought his arms before him. And I said, don't have your hands in front of you. And I realized I always say, keep your hands in front of you. What I mean by that is you're keeping your arms in front of your body. What I didn't want to see was the arms went in front as in they went before the body. So <laughs> I have to be careful with my words. We want the movement of the body to bring the arms. Sometimes there's a little kind of stretch, like you're whipping the movement, you're turning your body and the arms drag behind momentarily and then come through like single whip. You're turning your body, which brings your arms. That's fine. But we don't want the arms to be completely detached and, and left behind. Be careful of that. Neither do we want you, uh, the arms to be going first. That would mean that you're using your strength of your arms rather than the energy that comes from turning from our center, that kind of pivotal uh, effortless force. Think in terms of, we don't want to pull the tin off the paint with our fingers. We want to use a screwdriver <laughs> to pop the lid. That's the force that we want to use and it's effortless if we do that. So just be careful, just let the arms be with the body. You're turning everything as a unit instead of leaving them behind and turning the body and then having to move the arms. Neither do we want to move the arms first and then turn the body. It's twice the work and there's no power in it. So let's do it together. We'll do our hunch. Gather to the right. Slight turn to the right. Now keep the feeling of connection with your center. You're lifting your left toes, turning on the heel, and the arms are just going with. Feed the weight forwards and step, and you keep turning your waist. Now you let the arms roll over to your left, flipping over, feed the weight forwards, screwing into position, and filling your back as you fill your hands. Good. So that last movement, I just don't think, I don't think mirroring and removing the turn is actually going to help you because it's all about the turn. But there is something lovely about that rotation. Let me see if there's anything I think we can do. No, it's just, you know, it's a full, it's a pretty much 180 degree turn. From here, you're turning right. You're keeping your arms level with your body. You keep turning on the heel and as you step, it's more than 180 degrees. You keep turning your waist and you just let your arms roll over at the end. Feed the weight forwards, screw into the hip and Charleston. Good. So um, what I would ask you to do maybe is this practice, which will really help. You know, one palm facing up, one palm facing down. I had a student the other day, I got her to take a cushion sitting down. Got her to sit with a cushion. Let me just grab a cushion. You can do this when you're bored watching television. <laughs> Catch yourself a cushion and turn one palm facing up and one palm facing down. And then as you turn your waist, just a little bit, letting your arms completely relax, let your hands flip. So as you turn to one side, the hand will flip over. And if you turn to the other side, the hand will flip over. And that's the essence of this yin yang palm position that we have, that the turning of the waist, not just flipping your arms, but that little tiny turn of the waist is enough to flip the arms. Yeah, but of course, when our arms are floating and when we're giving them a little bit of power, we're not just doing this, we can keep turning. So if we want to go that way, we push and we turn the waist and the arms flip, but they keep flipping, you see? So like so. So we want this feeling of rotation. So at the end of that movement that we've just done, 
let me see, you're, you're coming through and you're going to keep turning your waist and as you turn your waist, your arms flip. That last part of the movement, your arms are flipping and then we can draw in squaring up and Charleston. I call this Charleston. Yeah. Okay. So it's that it's that idea that just by turning the waist, the arms will flip. Turning the waist, the arms will flip. So I don't want you to carry your arms to flip them. I want you to relax into the turn of the center, and that will naturally flip the arms over. So let's just do that movement one more time and see if we can get that nice flip of the arms um in the movement and then we'll finish for today so if you'd like to come up please so just from we're all doing the same thing from the punch gather to the right let's ward off release to the right lift your left toes turn feed your weight through keep going step now let your arms float over to the left and flip, feeding into the right, screwing into the right, and Charleston. And that's my little alarm saying, Jane, stop teaching. <laughs> Good, relax down, please. Well done. Okay. So I'll think about that move again. You know, we're we're really focusing on clarity. Um, I'll think about how to make that move more clear for you, but I think you've got it. That's pretty good. So, um, but yeah, when it comes to turns, the whole taking out turns and focusing on front view becomes difficult, doesn't it? So, but the turning of the waist brings the arms around. And then once you've got there, once you've stepped, then there's that rotation, that flipping before you come in square up and feed forwards. Good, let's just take a moment, please. I like warm down, I think it's important. <laughs> Good, just to tell your body, okay, you can, you can stop now, <laughs> down to the legs. Give your arms, uh, give your hands a little cup. So you're tucking the thumbs to the side. Good, down the legs. up the body again. I did mean to go all the way through the form today as well. We didn't, that didn't happen. But maybe you can use one of the older recordings to just float through the form or even just watch it just to keep keep the whole thing in your body as well. Good, shaking out. And a little heel tap. And stand, listen to your body, please. Enjoy that lovely energy flowing through. Let's bring the hands to center, hug your elbows gently in. Feel the touch, the warmth of your hands flowing into center. Feel your energy is stronger. Well done, let's relax down and close and we'll salute. Shia Samhal. Thank you very much, everyone. It's lovely to share the training space with you. I hope you're enjoying your practice and see you next time. Bye.